COPD is the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. It claims the lives of over 140,000 Americans each year. One death occurs every four minutes. COPD is a pulmonary disorder where there's airflow limitation caused by an inflammatory response. Usually this is due to cigarette smoke or other inhaled toxins or pollutants. Basically, the inflammatory response um, allows neutrophils, T lymphocytes, and other inflammatory cells to accumulate in the airway. Repeated exposure to the irritants will eventually lead to structural damage um, and lung changes. As inflammation continues, the airways constrict, allows them to become more narrow and swollen. This leads to a hypersecretion of mucus production that can host bacteria. That bacteria can thrive in warm, moist environments, just like the lungs, and it produces a greater risk for infection for the patient. There are two main forms of COPD. One is chronic bronchitis, two is emphysema. Chronic bronchitis is when they have a progressive long-term cough with mucus production, Emphysema is when you have progressive damage to the lung over time. That is usually when you have the destruction and the enlargement of the air spaces within the lungs. COPD risk factors can be non-modifiable or modifiable. Non-modifiable risk factors include age and genetic predisposition to COPD. Modifiable risk factors include smoking or using other tobacco substances the exposure to fumes and chemicals, occupational hazards, poor nutrition, or a childhood respiratory infection or pneumonia. COPD also has exacerbations since it is a chronic lung disorder. So continued use of smoking if you have frequent reoccurring respiratory infections. If you are obese or have poor nutrition, if you are sedentary lifestyle or have several comorbidities, that can increase your risk for an exacerbation of COPD. Signs and symptoms of COPD include shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, chronic cough that produces sputum, lack of energy, frequent respiratory infections, edema, cyanotic lips and fingernail beds or purse lips. The patient may also present with a barrel chest. Upon review, their ABGs may show signs of chronic respiratory insufficiency where compensated respiratory acidosis may be shown. The patient may also have an increased pulmonary vascular resistance and shows signs of symptoms of core pulmonale. A 58-year-old male has a 35-year history of smoking. He is newly diagnosed with COPD and is admitted into the ICU following complaints of shortness of breath and the inability to mobilize his own secretions. 
High flow nasal cannula and BiPAP oxygenation therapy was initiated and failed to improve his oxygenation status. The ABGs gathered after the high flow nasal cannula and BiPAP therapy indicate acute respiratory failure. Sir? Hi, my name's Allie. I'm going to be your nurse today. I'm just going to do a quick checkup on you. Um, can you please state your name for me? Nick. And do you know your date of birth? October 27th, 1976. Great. And then do you know what uh, current year it is right now? 1998. All right. And then do you know where you're at? Home. Home? Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick assessment on you. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm just gonna check your pupils real quick, okay? Can you open your eyes for me? Okay, and then are you able to grasp my, grasp my fingers as hard as you can? Good. Okay, well, I'm gonna go get respiratory real quick just to make sure uh, everything else is okay. Hello, this is respiratory. Hi, Erin, this is Allie. I am Erin for Nick Boyce and I'm in the ICU. Um, I'm concerned about his respiratory status and his neuro decline. Um, upon my focused assessment, the patient was ANO times two. His current stat is 80% on BiPAP. FiO2 is at 80% and the dual setting is at 12.6. I believe you need to come and assess his respiratory status right away. Okay, I'll be down. Hi, Nick. Hi, Erin from Respiratory. I'm going to be doing a quick assessment on you today, okay? All right. Can you take deep breaths for me? I hear some wrong guy. And some crackles. Okay. It looks like his SpO2 is at 80 percent. COPD is a chronic disease, so there is no cure for it. However, early detection and early treatment can prevent further progression of the disease and the um, deterioration it causes to other lung tissues. So some medications that can be used are bronchodilators like albuterol treatments for acute exacerbations. They can use corticosteroids and other anticholinergic bronchodilators as well. Supplemental oxygen, such as use of a high flow nasal cannula or even BiPAP to help um, ease the initiations of breaths and make it easier for the patient to breathe. You can do pulmonary rehab and do things such as like purse breathing to help um, improve oxygenation status. Surgery could be used if the disease is severe enough. They could do a lung transplant. But more proactive treatments or health promotion that could be done include making sure they're up to date with their pneumococcal vaccinations and flu vaccines. Your patient in 102 is starting to really act up. He's tugging on his IV and doesn't seem to want to keep his mask on. Uh, yeah, I just got his labs back. He's in acute respiratory failure. Okay, let me help you get okay. him situated. Thank you. Hey, hey, leave this on. You can't breathe without it. Oh, boy. Ugh. All right, calm down. It's okay. Maybe we It's okay, it's okay. Is there anything we could do to make you more comfortable? Oh, he's really out of it. Hey, Nick. Nick, we gotta keep this on. <coughs> Nick, 
The patient's recent labs and diagnostic studies show a pH of 7.22, a PaCO2 of 85, a bicarb of 22, PaO2 of 48, a SAT of 75%, hemoglobin at 13.5, hematocrit at 42, albumin at 3.8, a blood pressure of 135 over 86, a heart rate of 112, a temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit, respiratory rate 32, sodium level 135, potassium level 4.2, a chloride level of 108, and a glucose of 89. Dr. Lung, this is Allie. I am a nurse in the thoracic ICU at Maine. I'm just concerned about airway protection and oxygenation status for Nick Boyce. Um, he was a newly diagnosed with COPD and has a history of smoking for 35 years old. Um, he was admitted to the ED and brought into the ICU for shortness of breath and the inability to immobilize the secretions. After obtaining his first ABG at 8 this morning, he was in respiratory acidosis. His SAT was at 80% and his respiratory started him on high flow nasal cannula at four liters. His SAT never improved, so RT placed him on BiPAP to improve his oxygenation. Following BiPAP, the SAT dropped to 75%. I obtained another ABG, and it was indicative of acute respiratory failure. Nick Boyce has become more restless, and his level of consciousness has begun to decline. I have begun suctioning him continuously throughout the shift, but he keeps on secreting mucus into his airway. I believe we need to page anesthesia to intubate to intubate in order to protect his airway. Okay, so just to confirm, you want anesthesia to intubate the patient to protect his airway. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Intubation for a COPD patient is usually the last resort. However, in some circumstances, immediate intubation is necessary to protect the airway. Indications for immediate intubation in a COPD patient include multi-organ failure accompanied with COPD, failure to protect the airway as in they can't immobilize secretions from the upper airway, respiratory cardiac arrest, failure to improve on BiPAP, and a decreased level of consciousness where the Glasgow Coma Scale will show less than 7. Okay. 
inflate the cuff. Major x ray, non confirmed placement. Debriefing for this case includes proper hand hygiene should have been conducted before and after care provided to the patient. Prior to the emergency intubation, the patient should have been hyperoxygenated for three minutes. During the procedural timeout for intubation, the patient's date of birth should have been stated as the second identifier prior to the initiation of the intubation. During the intubation, Nia should have been present at the bedside to correct the patient's drop in MAP or blood pressure. Once the patient is placed on the vent, ABG should be checked periodically to evaluate whether or not the patient can be weaned off the vent or extubated. How much hair did you lose? <laughs> Look at it. A Let's... lot. <laughs> Let me see your arm. It's, it's fine. Is it it's red? All, you can't tell, really. Is it red? No, no it's right here. There's a patch missing right oh. here. Oh, there is. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. You were doing really good. Okay. I'm Aaron from Respiratory. I'm just going to do a quick assessment on you, okay? All right, well, <laughs> my hair's caught in this. Why didn't it call? Sorry. <laughs> it didn't ring. Hello, respiratory. Hi, Erin, this is Allie. Um, I'm the RN for Nick Boyce down in the ICU. I was concerned about his respiratory status and neuro decline. Upon my uh, health assessment, I'm sorry. Hello, we're from anesthesia. I'm Madison. I'm going to be one of the anesthetists. I'm Giovanni. I'm the anesthesiologist. Hi. So what seems to be going on here? Oh, wait, we what? Got <laughs> <laughs> you're just supposed to say you're, 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 you're